morning. Good morning and welcome. This is the Bible Sunday School. I am Bruce Ehrlich. And today we are here to consider the attitude of Peter and John as they stood before the rulers of Israel to give an answer concerning the healing of the crippled man at the temple gate called Beautiful. And we are calling today's lesson Boldness and Joy. The first thing we like to do in this class is pray. Thank you, Lord, for your holy word. Thank you for your holy son, Jesus, and all the blessings that we have through him in his name. Pray that you bless now the reading of your word, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, today's quote comes to us from David Guzik, pastor, teacher, and author of the Blue Letter Bible Commentary. And he says, regarding Jesus, He loves us, I'm sorry, He loves you enough to refuse to deceive you. He loves you enough to say there is only one way to God. And I'm it. Now we remember from our previous lessons, beginning at Acts chapter 1, that Jesus showed himself, that is to say, he appeared to his disciples and many others over a period of 40 days after his resurrection, and that he gave certain commandments to his disciples before his physical ascension into heaven, and that the disciples after receiving the promise of the Holy Spirit, were very bold to speak concerning the events that they had witnessed. Peter quoted from the scripture, from the prophecies of Joel and King David. In Acts chapter 2, verse 28, David is speaking of God the Father, and of our Lord, the Messiah, when he says, You have made known to me the paths of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence. We shouldn't be surprised at Peter's sudden ability to recall and quote the scripture. Given his recent renewal and restoration by the Holy Spirit, as promised by God the Father and our Lord Jesus. We have a definition for you today from Nelson's New Illustrated Bible Dictionary. And the word of the day, or one of the words of the day for today, is joy. Nelson says, Joy is a positive attitude or pleasant emotion. Delight. Many kinds of joy are reported in the Bible. Even the wicked are said to experience joy in their triumphs over the righteous. Many levels of joy are also described, including gladness, contentment, and cheerfulness. But the joy that the people of God should have is holy and pure. This joy rises above circumstances and focuses on the very character of God. For example, the psalmist rejoices over God's righteousness, salvation, mercy, Creation, word, and faithfulness. 
God's characteristics as well as his acts are the cause of rejoicing. The joy required of the righteous person is produced by the Spirit of God. This kind of joy looks beyond the present to our future salvation and to our sovereign God who works out all things for our ultimate good, which is Christ-likeness. This kind of joy is distinct from mere happiness. Joy like this is possible even in the midst of sorrow. Okay, our first reading is from Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 and 2, and we're looking at the New Living Translation. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a huge crowd of witnesses to the life of faith, let us strip off every weight that slows us down, especially the sin that so easily trips us up, and let us run with endurance the race God has set before us. We do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus, the champion who initiates and perfects our faith. Because of the joy awaiting him, he endured the cross, disregarding its shame. Now he is seated in the place of of honor beside God's throne. All right. One day, Peter and John were going up to the temple at the time of prayer. Two ordinary guys doing what they ordinarily did on an ordinary day. However, these two guys Serve an extraordinary God. So let's find out what happened. We're going to look at the New International Version, and we're at Acts chapter 3, starting at verse 1. One day, Peter and John were going up to the temple at the time of prayer, at 3 in the afternoon. Now a man crippled from birth was being carried to the temple gate called Beautiful, where he was put every day to beg from those going into the temple courts. When he saw Peter and John about to enter, he asked them for money. Peter looked straight at him, as did John. Then Peter said, Look at us! So the man gave them his attention, expecting to get something from them. Then Peter said, Silver or gold I do not have, but what I have I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk. Taking him by the right hand, he helped him up, and instantly the man's feet and ankles became strong. He jumped to his feet and began to walk. Then he went with them into the temple courts, walking and jumping and praising God. When all the people saw him walking and praising God, they recognized him as the same man who used to sit begging at the temple gate called Beautiful. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. <sighs> P. 
Peter never missed an opportunity to speak up. And in today's story, when all the people ran to him, he began to explain to them that it was not through his power or righteousness that the crippled man had received this miraculous hearing. I'm sorry, healing. Miraculous healing. Oxford language defines boldness as a willingness to take risks and act innovatively. Also as confidence or courage. Antonyms for boldness include cowardice, timidity, and fear. Got a reading for you from the Amplified Study Bible. We're at Acts chapter 4. We're starting at verses 1. And while Peter and John were talking with, to the people, the priests and the captain who was in charge of the temple area, area and of the temple guard and the Sadducees came up to them, being extremely disturbed and thoroughly annoyed because they were teaching the people and proclaiming in the case of Jesus the resurrection of the dead. So they arrested them and put them in jail until the next day because it was evening. But many of those who heard the message of salvation believed in Jesus and accepted him as the Christ. And the number of the men came to be about 5,000. On the next day, their magistrates and elders and scribes, Sanhedrin Jewish High Court, were gathered together in Jerusalem. And Annas, the high priest, was there, and Caiaphas, and John, and Alexander, and all others who were of high priestly descent. A little note here for you that says, The Sanhedrin, which consisted of 70 men plus the high priest, was the highest Jewish court. The group consisted of the wealthiest most educated and most powerful Jewish men in Israel. Okay. Got a reading for you from the English Standard Version Study Bible. And we're going to pick it up at verse 7. It says, And when they had set them in the midst, they inquired, By what power? Or by what name did you do this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers of the people and elders, If we are being examined today concerning a good deed done to a crippled man, by what means this man has been healed? <clears throat> Let it be known to all of you and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, by him this man is standing before you well. This Jesus is the stone that was rejected by you, the builders, which has become the cornerstone. And there is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were uneducated, common men, they were astonished. And they recognized 
that they had been with Jesus. Okay, we got a little note here that says, Peter's statement that there was salvation in no other name was an implicit invitation to the Sanhedrin to place their faith in Jesus. It was Jesus' name that brought physical deliverance to the lame man. The same powerful and exclusive name that brings eternal salvation to all who call upon him. Okay. Got a reading for you from <clears throat> the Amplified Study Bible. I'm going to pick it up at verse 14. And seeing the man who had been healed standing there with them, they had nothing to say in reply. But after ordering them to step out of the council chamber, they, they began to confer among themselves, saying, What are we to do with these men? For the fact that an extraordinary miracle has taken place through them is public knowledge and clearly evident to all the residents of Jerusalem, and we cannot deny it. But to keep it from spreading further among the people and the nation, let us stir sternly warn them not to speak again to anyone in this name. So they sent for them and commanded them not to speak as his representatives or teach at all in the name of Jesus, using him as their authority. But Peter and John replied to them, whether it is right in the sight of God to listen to you and obey you rather than God, you must judge for yourselves. For we, on our part, cannot stop telling people about what we have seen and heard. How was it that the ordinary people or ordinary people like Peter and John could stand before the smartest, wealthiest, best educated, and the most powerful and influential people in the government of Israel and still speak the truth about Jesus boldly? I think we need only to refer back to the text. The rulers of the Jewish people perceived that Peter and John were uneducated, common men. However, they recognized, or some translations say, that they took note that Peter and John had been with Jesus. Got a little bit of class roundup for you. Self-help books can be interesting. Seven-step plans can be helpful. But if we are looking for eternal life, boldness and joy, salvation from sin, and deliverance from the bondage and the effects of sin in our lives. As Peter and John said before the Sanhedrin, there is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. Jesus said in John chapter 14, verse 6, 
that I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to God the Father except through me. Let us be bold as Peter and John were as we proclaim the truth of the gospel. Many people try to find happiness and joy through medication or any one of a multitude of techniques or prescriptions. A lot of people find their courage, their boldness in the bottle, in drinking alcohol, sadly. Real joy, the kind of joy we can only find in the presence of our Heavenly Father, can be found through the saving work of Jesus of Nazareth, through our decision to trust in his name. Real courage, true boldness, can only be found as noted by the rulers of the Jewish nation in knowing and spending time to get to know Jesus. The writer of the Proverbs informs us <clears throat> that the wicked flee when no one pursues them, but the righteous are as bold as a lion. The writer of Psalms informs us that our champion, Jesus, the Messiah, knows the paths of life, and that God the Father, through his Holy Son, Jesus, can fill us. He can infuse our souls with joy, with his presence. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for your holy word. I pray that you bless the reading of your holy word for each of us this week. And I ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Have a good week.